What my dudes, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making a cast iron pizza, but we're going to be doing it gluten free because I can't have wheat. It's unfortunate, but true. But anyway, let's get started. All right, to get started, we're going to add a cup and a quarter of warm water. We want this to be around 100 to 110 degrees. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of dry active yeast to this. You don't want your water too hot, otherwise you'll kill your yeast. Then we're going to add one tablespoon of olive oil. I'm just going to pour that right in there. And then we're just going to give this a whisk to combine, and we really want to agitate that yeast. And then we're going to set it aside while we do the rest of our dry ingredients. I'm using Double Zero Neapolitan Style Gluten-Free Flour from King Arthur. We're going to go ahead and add two cups of this. Actually, two and a third cups of this into a bowl. Realize you shouldn't be using plastic and use a metal bowl instead, so your wife can clean up an extra bowl. She'll be so happy. Add a tablespoon of sugar a teaspoon of salt, and then we're just going to whisk this to combine with a fork or a whisk. I couldn't find my little tiny whisk to that. I was a little bit sad. Then we're going to go ahead and whisk that liquid in there just kind of roughly. Uh, we're not trying to get anything too crazy going. We're just trying to get it all kind of combined. And then we're going to come in here with our bread hook attachment to our hand mixer. And then we're going to test our dough. For me, when I picked this up and I went to go move it, it was just a little bit too wet. So I added some more flour to this. And then went ahead and beat it again with my hand mixer. And this time when I pulled it up, you can see it's not sticking to my hands as much. You want this dough to be slightly sticky, but not overly sticky. If that makes sense. It should be able to come off your hand pretty easily, but it is going to leave a little bit on your hand. Go ahead and roll that up into a ball, folding it over on itself. Add some olive oil to your bowl. Rub it in there and go ahead and put your dough ball in there. And now we're just going to let this rest on the countertop after we coat it in some more oil. Go ahead and rub that bad boy down. Oh yeah, make sure you get it nice and rubbed down. Should feel like a nice massage. Now go ahead and cover this with some saran wrap. And then once it's covered the saran wrap, kind of loosely like this, we're just going to let it rest for one hour on the countertop until it's doubled in size like this. That's right, it actually rises. Go ahead and olive oil down the sides of your bowl. Like so. Then I like to scoop it out, make sure the bottom's formed well. Flip it over, check it, give it a nice little pat down, another little light rub with olive oil. Might be a little unnecessary, but hey, it ain't going to hurt nothing. The music industry. Then go ahead and recover this bad boy. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and name our dough ball. I named mine Billy. And now we're just going to take Billy and put him in the refrigerator for 30 minutes to an hour if you're baking the same day. Or you can leave it overnight. I will tell you, if you leave it overnight, though, you're not going to get that golden brown color with your crust, which is what happened to me. It should be nice and springy. Now go ahead and grab yourself a cast iron skillet. And then lightly rub it down with a neutral oil like canola that has a high smoke point. Now take Billy and cut them in half and put them into our cast iron skillet. Now we're just going to go ahead and press them down. We're not going to stretch it like a normal pizza dough because this is gluten free and it won't spread right. And you're going to take two fingers and kind of make yourself a little crust around the edges while spinning your cast iron. And you should be preheating your oven to 500 degrees while this goes on, by the way. Now look at that. You can see the nice little crust slip. That's going to fall over and create that nice puffy crust for us. Now go ahead and add your pizza sauce to this. I forgot to film that, so I'm just going to leave a list of ingredients in the below for you. This is just a quick and dirty pizza sauce. Now slice off some fresh mozzarella because we are making a margarita pizza. And go ahead and make these nice little circles like this. Then show it to your wife and she's going to reject it. And you're just going to have to shred that cheese up into little chunks. That's okay because we get a little bit of snack and cheese out of this. That's in that pizza sauce. Absolutely delicious. Now I'm kind of weird and I like to bake basil into my margarita and put fresh on top when it's done. So, you know, do whatever you prefer, but I like more basil. Go ahead and add that and we're going to stick it in our oven, which again is at 500 degrees and it's going to be in there for about 18 minutes. Now go ahead and grab your smallest pan and pour about half cup to a quarter cup of balsamic into it because we're going to make a balsamic reduction for this. <laughs> Go ahead and agitate it and just bring it to a light simmer until it reduces in half. Now go ahead and grate yourself a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. This is going to be for our second pizza. And then about a half cup of mozzarella. And we're just going to blend those together. That uh, Parmesan cheese is going to add a lot of uh, 
nice flavor to our pizza. And by now, our balsamic reduction is done. Should look pretty serious, B. And go ahead and pull that pizza out of the oven. Look at that. That looks delicious. Go ahead and add some of your balsamic reduction to the top of this pizza. And look at that. Doesn't that look pretty? Well, it looked prettier when it was fresh, right? But hey, I like to bake it in there. Now go ahead and pull it out. This is the beauty of using the cast iron. It pops out really easily. Go ahead and add some fresh basil if you're doing like I do. Again, I like mine cook and fresh. I know it's weird. And then go ahead and slice it. All right, there we go. Gluten-free pizza. Let's go. Mmm. Sauce is good. Crust is nice and crisp. Fresh basil and the cooked basil will play really well together. And that balsamic reduction is absolutely divine. I love everything about good margarita. Pizza. All right, now let's cut to the next pizza. So we're going to go ahead and follow the same steps as before. We're going to put down some oil in our cast iron, canola, preheat the oven to 500 degrees, mash down our dough. Then we're going to add our tomato sauce and cheese blend to it, like you would for a normal pizza. Then add some pepperonis on top. And then we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven. And as I said before, if you make your dough the night before, you're not going to get that golden brown with this crust. Don't know why, that's just how it is. But it is going to make a delicious looking pizza. Then we're going to go ahead and put that on our cutting board and with a large knife, slice it up into eight slices. I really like these personal pan pizzas, if you can't tell. And let's get a taste test. All right, y'all. We got our second slice. I realize I didn't show you from the side, but look at that. Look at that airy crust. It's like a real pizza. Like a real non-gluten-free pizza. Let's get let's get a taste. Oh, yeah. Like... I know the last one was like an adult pizza, but hey, this is your childhood, like, pepperoni pizza. Like, this is a classic, and it's classic for a reason. This is delicious. I just realized what really makes a children's pizza, uh -huh. like that old school style, some of that old school Parmesan cheese on top, that powery stuff. I know I have good fresh Parmesan, but, you know, nothing, nothing beats a classic. Mm-hmm. Mm All right, let's go back. And there you have it, folks, a gluten-free pizza crust that doesn't suck. <laughs> I know, it, it seems like a mythical thing, but it's true. So anyway, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, it really helps me out. Let me know what you want me to make next. And as always, toodles.